you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, Are you washed in the blood? In the blood? Everybody glad to be here this evening. Say amen. You're going to have to say it louder than that. Come on. Amen. There you go. I don't know. We're glad you're here this evening. Uh, boy, I tell you what. God blessed this morning, ladies and gentlemen. There was a moving of the Spirit of God in this house. I mean, tell you, God blessed us this morning. He really did, and I, I'm so thankful for that. Just appreciate how, how you know, the people responded uh, to our morning message. But anyway, uh, just want to say once again, Gia has now put this uh, our messages on on the internet. They're on YouTube. Uh, you can find us there at GloryBoundChurch.com and find uh, the messages there listed and listen to them if you want. But now they're going to have some closed caption to them. So if you know somebody that would maybe benefit from uh, the closed caption part of a, of a message, that would be a good thing to have done now maybe. So I uh, just want to encourage you to keep that thought in mind. Uh, I'm sorry? It is awesome. It really is. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, let's open up with a word of prayer and get right into our service. Brother Wayne Christian is going to be preaching for us tonight, going to be doing some singing up here for us and everything. So uh, we're going to have a good time here tonight. Somebody say amen. Look over at your neighbor and say, I sure am glad you're here this evening. Hey, we are glad you're here this evening. Thank all of y'all for coming out and being with us here this evening. We're, we're expecting to have a good time here in the Lord tonight. Father, we're grateful tonight for your many blessings that you bestow upon us. And we're so thankful, Lord, for the faith and the love that you place in our heart to just want to honor you. And, Lord, we're drawn to your presence here this evening. And just ask you, Lord, just to pour out your spirit upon us in a mighty way. And, Lord, I just pray that your mighty anointing be upon this service tonight. I pray that lives will be touched and lives will be changed. Father, we pray for our family and friends tonight that are not here with us, that, Lord, wherever they're at, we pray your hand of blessing to be upon them. And, Father, if we've got loved ones tonight that are unsaved, we pray for the Spirit of God to come upon them in a mighty way, bring conviction upon their heart, that, Lord, that they might want to come to the Lord and, and just turn their heart over to Him. Lord, I just pray that if we have loved ones tonight that are in a backslidden condition, may the Spirit of the Lord come upon them as well and just put conviction on their heart that it's time to come home to God. So, Lord, I just pray now as we enter into this time of service that, Lord, that we would just do our very best in praise and worship. Let us honor you, Lord, and give you the, the rightful glory and honor that you deserve. And I thank you, Lord, for everyone that's here tonight, and I pray your blessings upon one and all. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, amen and amen. Well, Brother Wayne, you're it, brother. Go ahead. I normally don't have been doing a whole lot of singing. I used to sing every time I preached, and I kind of got out of that habit, but I'm trying to get back into the habit. So, I, I do have a couple of guests here tonight. My little sister, my little baby sister, Naomi Grigg, and Sister Pam. Got my sister. Got 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 my other sister, Carol. Me and Earl. Anybody know Earl Hightower? Sometimes we don't want to know him, but we know him. Ain't that right, Kenneth? We grew up more like brothers than we did cousins, but he's my cousin. He lived with us. Daddy's favorite story to tell was always when we went to the dump ground. We was about two years old. Me and Earl kind of had a little squabble going on. I just opened the door and kicked him out. <laughs> now you know what's wrong with Earl. <laughs> ah! Daddy, like I always tell that story, he had a more elaborate story than I did, but that's the gist of it right there. <laughs> we want to sing you a song tonight. How many know we're in a warfare? We're in a battle. And I want to talk to you tonight, and the title of my message is The Battlefield of the Mind. Mm -hmm. And when I start out, you're probably not going to recognize me going to the battlefield of the mind, but we're going to wind up there, good Lord willing. But I want to talk to you tonight about a battle. We're all in a battle, Amen. Every day that we live, the Bible says that days, they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, persecution can come from the natural side of things, or it can come from the spiritual side of things. A lot of different ways that persecutions can come, but we know they're coming. Mm -hmm. Because the devil knows his business. Amen. 
Yes, but does. you, whenever you gave your heart to Christ, you became enlisted in an army for God. Overcomers. Amen. And you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Thank Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And we're enlisted and we're soldiers in an army of God. We don't listen to... Don't listen to us singing necessarily. I guess you have to to hear the words, but we're not perfect. Hello? There you go. I should have got a bunch of amens there. And we're not perfect. He's just speaking for himself. But I do like to sing, amen? This is an old Henson song. I love, I love the Henson sister. Gia, you know that. Had the opportunity to play with them several times in my lifetime, and I enjoyed every bit of it. Didn't learn anything from them necessarily, but I learned I like to play with them. to say something say it okay go for it you know i've listened to many people and we're and we're gonna uh start going through the book again of of who we are in christ and what we have and what god has purchased for us that we can claim in christ and uh too many times we let the satan just steal from us we're not fighting for what is already ours and but uh I know because we've been to Falls Creek and because on Wednesday nights uh, the kids are my mission field and I appreciated the church praying for the kids and for Falls Creek. I gotta tell you it was awesome. God just directed the the sermons and the worship and it was awesome for our kids and for us and I, I thank you for that. But don't stop praying. Don't stop fighting for our kids. And in my mind the Lord just gave me a little flash. 
is us talking about being a soldier and fighting for what is already ours and what he's already paid for on the cross. And you see two little kids and you better get them different. If you get them the same toy, they better be different colors. Okay, I had two boys. <laughs> and we always had a blue one and a red one or a blue one and a green one because if it was all the same color, it ended up with one. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. And the Lord just flashed that to me to die. That it's time that we begin to say, no, you're not taking my kids. You're not taking my grandkids. You're not taking the kids of this church. They belong to us. It's mine. That is my grandson. That is my granddaughter. That is my son. And you're not taking them. We can stand on that and know that God has given us the ability to fight the enemy when it comes to our families and when it comes to ourselves. I know that Wayne is going to preach us the word tonight and get us revved up. Brother, before we get going here, I, I want to just kind of go right along with what you just said. These kids, as we all know, the Bible says in, in the book of Psalms, the children are a heritage of the Lord. Absolutely, okay? yes. Heritage. And I looked that word up, and that means legally possessed. Yes. God has legally, legally possessed our children. Through yeah. the blood of Jesus Christ. They, that, they, they're gifts of God to us, but they, I mean, when our children get saved, they become God's property. Right? Amen. And, and so what we have here is, is we not only have us standing up for them, but we got all of heaven standing up for our kids. Right. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 I had to switch out the batteries while he's talking. That's a good thing you talked tonight. I'm glad you approved. I had to be careful. I wind up in the doghouse. But I'll tell you what, and this is all seriousness. Pastor talked this morning about, about bragging on your wife. Let me tell you. You can go to a Joyce Myers meeting. You can go to a Beth Moore meeting. You can go to a Kate McVay meeting, a Billy Brim meeting. Any of them lady preachers you want to go to, and you won't find one of your butter sitting right there. I say that with prejudice, but I say it with bias too. Because I guarantee you, she is anointed by the Heavenly Father to carry the Word of God. And she can go circles around me any day of the week. That's to my shame. Because she studies more than I do. So all the preaching that comes to me, comes to me first, like it ought to anyway. But I told you I want to talk to you tonight a little bit about the battlefield of the mind. But how many knows that in the battle we all have weapons? Amen. The scriptures I'm going to read to you tonight are not new by any stretch. You've heard them thousands and thousands and thousands of times. But we want to refresh your memory tonight and bring some call, maybe call some things to your remembrance. Amen. And I always said, whenever God's done, I'm done. So uh, I will try my best to maintain that tonight. Um, and I will shut up whenever he says, sit down. So I, I kind of wish maybe Pastor didn't announce who's speaking tonight. Maybe we'd have some more people showed up. I don't know. But anyway, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We got more here than what we usually have Sunday night. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, let's go to the book of Ephesians in the sixth chapter. Everybody knows where I'm going. The sixth chapter. We're going to start reading at the 10th verse. And it said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and against powers. I've got to move some stuff here. But against principalities and powers, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. Father, that for this privilege that you've allowed me tonight to, to bring your word to this congregation. Father God, above all, I want you to be lifted up tonight. I want you to have complete preeminence in this service because I'm just a mouthpiece. And Lord, without the Holy Spirit comes by and fills these lips of clay, Lord, we're, we're just a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And Father God, I pray that you would fill these lips with worthwhile stuff and set me down when I've said enough. 
God, tonight that you would direct our path in everything that we do from this moment forward. And God, that, 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 that uh, anointing would be upon the ears of the hearer, that they could hear and understand what I'm trying to get conveyed to them tonight, Father. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I know we can all agree with that. We're all in the various battles. We're all in different battles. We've all got something going on. In, in, in this life, we've all, all got something happening around us, something happening to us, something's, something's working in our mind constantly. There's always something going on. But as long as we live in this earth suit, we're going to have those battles. If you thought you're going to get saved and it's going to go away, well, somebody misinformed you because it's not going to go away. But God's prepared weapons and placed them at our disposal. I said he's placed them at our disposal. And it's up to you and I to tap in and to, to, to lay hold and to grab hold of those weapons. For fighting every battle that we have. First Timothy 6 and 12 says this. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. One of the greatest battles you'll have in your lifetime is the battle of faith. I mean, how many times have you heard somebody say, well, I just don't have enough faith? Or I just don't, I don't have faith like you do. Or I'm losing faith. But the Bible says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And that's found in Romans 10, 17. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us, that without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that seek, seek that rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So faith is one of our main weapons. It is the very first weapon that you'll ever have in fighting the enemy. Because without faith, you didn't even get saved. You first had to recognize that Jesus Christ came died on the cross, and rose again so that you could have the salvation that you possessed. So faith was the first weapon that God placed at your disposal. Now don't get quiet on me now. I know you want to hear me, and I know you want to understand, but I'm just kind of like that old dog out there. If you holler sick of me every once in a while, it kind of cranks me up a little bit more. So I can use a few sickums tonight. <laughs> I don't know Kenneth's going to say something. Amen. But... So faith is the very first weapon of our warfare. We place our complete trust and confidence in a risen Savior. Knowing that we're going to have a reward at the end of this thing, and that reward is going to be heaven, a heavenly home. Streets of gold, gates of pearl, walls of jasper. And we're kind of painting you a little picture of what's lying at the end of this thing. Y'all been treasure hunting? You get excited when you find that treasure? You got a hope of the best treasure you'll ever find in your life whenever you met Jesus Christ as your personal Savior because he provided you a way to get to the end of that thing and you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, if you will. But it becomes, faith becomes the very first weapon that we have. And because of Jesus Christ, and this is the part you got to get a hold of tonight. I don't want you to get a hold. If you miss any other part of the sermon tonight, get a hold of this. Jesus Christ is what makes you complete. Because in Jesus we are complete, who is the head of all principalities and powers. What did I say we battle against? We battle against principalities and powers. But in the same, Paul said in Colossians, we are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. So you're complete tonight. You are complete. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're complete. That means the weapons that you need to fight the enemy, you already possess. But you have to hone those weapons. That soldier that fights with a sword don't just go out to battle and fight with that sword, but he put it on a hone. And he'll hone that thing. And he'll get a razor's edge on it. And the people that had the bayonets would keep those bayonets sharpened. People that fight with knives, they want to make sure that their knives are sharpened. I'm an old meat cutter. I usually have one of the sharpest knives in the box because I don't like working hard. Hello? 
Look at me. I'm kind of fluffy. I don't like working hard. So I keep my knives sharp if I'm cutting beef, pork, chicken, lamb, whatever it is. I want a good sharp tool to cut it with. So I hone that blade and I keep it sharp. Guess what? You as an individual in Christ, you as a person in Christ, have the opportunity and the obligation, if you want to continue to win in the warfare and the battle that you're in, to hone your weapons. Whether it be faith, the shield of faith, whether it be the sword, the sword of the Spirit, which is? Ah, oh, y'all good. But how can you hone that weapon if you don't study the Word of God? How can you hone that weapon if you don't exercise your faith? I found out, I'm going to give you a stop right here just for a minute because i gotta, I got I to gotta share this story with y'all. My mama, great woman of faith. Ain't that right, Naomi? Great woman of faith. She always say, God done took care of me these many years depending on whatever birthday rolled around. May the 31st was 83. Right before her 83rd birthday, they diagnosed her with endometrial carcinoma. Stage 2, more than likely stage 3. She looked at the doctor. The doctor said, what you think, Miss Christian? She said, God doesn't drop me this far. He ain't going to leave me now. So we had folks praying. <coughs> Mama's praying. Well, they're just going to treat her for the blood loss, and, you know, they're going to just kind of make it easy on her because, you know, she's had bypass surgery and blah, blah, blah. She's 83. She's got congestive heart failure. Mama said, I ain't got none of that stuff, but, you know, that's Mama. Thank God for Mama. So she goes to the oncologist. They schedule her uh, an appointment to go to an onco oncologist. I can't say these big words. Gynecologist at OU. She goes this last week. Y'all, 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 y'all ain't gonna believe this unless you're a Christian. I've got a Christian in the house. <laughs> I've been one all my life. <clears throat> but she goes to this oncologist, gynecologist, and they do the exams all over the same exams as they did down here in Duncan at the oncology center over here. Come back and say, well, Miss Christian said, uh, you're only at stage one. Y'all hear what I said? From a possible stage three to a stage one in a month, month and a half. <laughs> God is faithful. God is faithful. Those that trust in him, he's faithful. When you exercise your faith, you can fight those kind of battles. You kind of be like David. The Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. How did David encourage himself in the Lord? Well, I, you know, I slew the lion. He wasn't nothing. I slew that bear. He wasn't nothing. So what's this Philistine? He ain't nothing. Whatever battle you're facing tonight, when you're exercising your faith in the correct manner, it's nothing. When your feet hit the floor in the morning, the devil say, Oh my word, they're up again. How many want to get to that point where the devil say, Oh my word, they're up again, instead of just throwing them fiery darts constantly at you, 24-7? I've told this testimony before, and I've failed again, but I had this reoccurring situation in my home back when I was a young man. Had a man to come to the back door. We were living in a duplex at that time with poor folk. We was. That's where we got a hold of the fact that we blessed. That's back in the day when Pentecostals didn't know they was blessed. <coughs> Some of them still don't know it. But we blessed people. But we lived in this old duplex and there was a there was a a, a, a screen door on, on the back and me and Ray, we shared a bedroom in the, one of the kitchens of this duplex. This old guy showed up at the back door one night. I'm about half awake, hot, summer night like it is now. Long black cape. Everybody seen that Undertaker wrestler? 
Got that one, that big old black hat pulled over there, and that old long cape. That's what he looked like. Well, some years later, all these years later, I'm laying in my bedroom out there at the house. Kathy gets up and goes to work. I hear the back door open. Shuts. I thought, man, she forgot something. And then I hear my bedroom door open. And this same dude that came after me as a child standing at the foot of my bed. Hand to God. He looked at me and he said, I come to get you. I said, you lying devil. Get on out of here. You ain't got no power over me. Just get on out of here. And I heard the door shut on the way out. I'm talking about a spiritual battle. I'm talking about a, a, a physical but a spiritual battle where, where the enemy is coming after you if you're a child of God. But you have weapons at your disposal if you will use them. If you recognize who you are in Christ Jesus, you recognize that you are complete, that you are an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ, and you have authority over every power that the enemy can bring to you, then he's got to flee at the name of Jesus. So I'm going through a pretty tough time, and I'm kind of sick and kind of down in body a few months later. Could have been even a year. I don't know. Time flies when you get old. <clears throat> Y'all look at me like a new calf at the gate. But anyway, same thing happened. I hear the back door open, shut. Bedroom door open, shut. Same dude standing there at the end of my bed. And I wasn't taking no drugs. I wasn't smoking none of that wacky weed. But he said, I told you I'm coming to get you. And I was pretty sick. I ain't going to lie. I, 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 I had allowed the enemy to kind of jump all over me. And I looked at the devil right square in the eye and I said, I've told you and told you that I belong to God. Now you take yourself and you leave, and don't you never come back in the name of Jesus. What are you talking about, Brother Wayne? I'm talking about being complete in Jesus Christ. Recognizing who you are in Christ. Because guess what? As much as He wants to take you down, He cannot cross the bloodline. He can't cross the bloodline. He can throw fiery darts at you all day long, sister, but He can't cross that bloodline. He may put thoughts in your mind that ought not be there, but he can't cross that bloodline. He may put temptations in your way that you just really don't think you got a way to fight them, but he can't win because you're a child of God. You belong to God. You're the heritage of God. Amen? So guess what? He's going to fight for you. David went against this Philistine. And he looked them guys right square in the eye, all his brothers in the army. This wasn't even part of my notes, Brother David. But he went against all them, all them soldiers in the army over there carrying down behind rocks. Man, he's a big one. I don't think we can do it, brother. He's a big one. He's too big. We ain't got nobody to go get him. Here comes little old Ruddy David. He said, what y'all talking about? He said, I, I already know this ain't... It, who is this uncircumcised Philistine come against the armies of God? Who is this guy that thinks he can come over here and manhandle us? By faith. By obedience. By knowing who he was. And what God did for him already. He was able to take three little stones from a brook and put it in a, put one little stone in a sling. He walked up to that giant, Brother Lindell, just like he wasn't nobody. He said, <coughs> Brother, today, I'm cutting your head off. Now I'm paraphrasing. That ain't in the New Living. It ain't in the American Standard. It ain't King James. I'm paraphrasing. But he said, I'm going to cut your head off and I'm going to feed it to the birds. That Philistine, look at you. Come out here with that little old, little old stone in the sling. Think you're going. I think probably before he got the words out of his mouth, David just let her rip. Right between the eyes. That giant fell down. 
He took his sword, cut his head off. The enemy's sword used his own weapon against him. What you talking about, Brother Wayne? I'm talking about that battlefield that's going on in your mind. Trying to convince you that you're nobody. See, the battlefield, I'm going to tell you what the battlefield of your mind is. It's anger. It's depression. It's worry. Unforgiveness. Anxiety. Fear. What if? What ifs will paralyze you to the point that you won't move. You won't even come out your house. It can put you in a state of mind where the, that you won't move from where you're at to get to the grocery store to get what you need to, to eat for your physical being. I, we had a friend, didn't we, Sister Debbie, that battled that very thing. I forget what the name of it is, but she couldn't even leave her own home. I have a family member that did the same thing. Couldn't leave her own home. Guess what she's doing today? You ain't going to believe what she's doing today. Through the power of the Holy Ghost and through the delivering power of Jesus Christ, she works the homeless streets of Oklahoma City. Passing out water. Passing out groceries. Passing out whatever they need. Preaching Jesus to them. Showing them what the love of Jesus Christ is. I'm talking about the battlefield in the mind. It is conquered strictly by prayer, by studying the Word, knowing who you are in Jesus Christ, and exercising that authority that you have through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Let me tell you who that little girl is. She's sitting on the back row right back here right now. Amen. My mama said, I'm so proud of her. She said she scares me to death, but I'm just proud of her. <laughs> that she walked up to them guys. She said, I know that one was drunk. Didn't you know where he was at? He said, because he asked her, was she married? She said, yep. He said, well, are you happily married? She said, yep. <laughs> so, but they just they walk up and just hug her. They're so grateful to get what they need to sustain their life. But I'm talking about the power of Jesus Christ and what he can do to set your mind free. To set you free. Once like a bird, prison I dwell, no freedom from. Yeah. I've been there. There are people sitting all over the world today and all over Marlowe, Oklahoma, that are trapped inside their mind and can't get out of their mind because of fear and doubt and unbelief. And in our natural body, we're given to that that confusion and that depression, feelings of condemnation, feelings of worthlessness. How many of my listening to talk, how many listening to me tonight say these things? You've been there. You don't have to raise your hand. Because I can tell you just about everybody in this building probably without fail at some point in your life have been in one or two or maybe all of those positions in life. But the way you defeat it is through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Through the written Word of God. Let's go back over to the book of Ephesians. No, let's wait a minute. I got one more I'll throw at you. <laughs> maybe two more. I got about 12 minutes left. Maybe. Or 20. Paul said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Amen? Romans 12, 2 said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do you do that? I'm glad you asked. Back over to the book of Ephesians. I'm not then, man... Somebody on turn my page. Ain't been nobody up here but me. Oh, thank God for this Bible. Amen. That's another miracle. Y'all heard about this miracle. This Bible was lost. 
Falls Creek three years ago. My lovely wife, bless her heart. She wanted to borrow my Bible, take it to Falls Creek. She come home, Bible wasn't nowhere to be found. Ain't nobody can search property. I should have been a detective, really. I tore them vans apart. I tore her car apart. I tore her suitcases apart when she got home. And my Bible was not there. I went to Falls Creek three times. Went through the cabin where they stayed. Ain't no Bible there. Well, their Bible, it wasn't mine. And I began to pray. And you know what's odd? I got two more just like it. Same page number, same. But guess what? He ain't got my sweat, my tears, my notes. He got none of that stuff in it. The pages aren't torn in them like they're torn in this one. I'm getting to pray. I say, God, you know, I... And, and, and here's the other thing. It was given to me by my late father-in-law. Precious, precious soldier. I'm telling you, dear man of God. Great man of faith. So I began to pray about this Bible. Lord, I need, I, I really do, I just want it. Bible says he'll give you the desires of your heart. I didn't need it for the Bible's sake. Because I told you, I got three just like it. Plus, Kathy bought me a new one. She got me a new fancy Bible cover for it. And, all that kind of stuff. When I left Chicken Shay, the people at Walmart gave me a great big, I guess they thought I'd get my old to give me a giant print Bible. <coughs> so, I just, I just wanted, I wanted my treasure back. Out of all my possessions that I own, and I own something like 14 guitars at one time, I don't know how many I got now. I got all kinds of jewelry. I got all kinds of tools. I got some fabulous kids. Grandkids, no greats, thank God. But I got a lot of stuff. But out of all my possessions, I value this above all of them. David Jr. had an occasion to go take some people to the airport or something. He gets in the van, and one of them people climbs in the back seat Brother David, here's the Bible we found. Come to church on Sunday night. Pastor said, I think I found your Bible. Did you lose the Bible? Yep. Didn't even have to. I was standing way back here in the back. Didn't even have to come up here to look at it. See if it's mine. I said, thank God that's mine. See, when you lose something that you love, you know what it is. Amen. I just threw it out there. It didn't cost you nothing. Y'all don't want to hear about my stuff. But it is a miracle. And it is part of being in faith. And I let it torment me. I ain't going to lie about it. It bothered me. Not because she lost it, because she, she put it where she thought she knew where it was at. But it wasn't there. I don't know how it got from point A to point B. But I do know one thing. These eyes are still pretty good, and I tore that van apart, and it was not in that van. But God loved me so much that he brought it back. Whoever had borrowed it, <clears throat> and I think that's what happened. I think somebody borrowed it, took it home, and hopefully they got saved while they had it. Amen. Hopefully they gained some faith while they had it. All right, go back, Wayne. Shut up. The natural body and in our natural mind, we tend to have all these feelings that we just talked about. And that's what we're calling the battlefield of the mind. And the battle that you face in the morning when you get up will be that same battle. How you get up in the morning and how you set your day will be how your day goes if you choose. On purpose. You'll hear me and Kathy say that a whole lot. Have a good day on purpose. On purpose. With a purpose. Amen. Amen. But how you set your day, 
And I try to start my day out every day, every day, thanking God for his mercy and for his grace. Because I don't want justice. Amen. I want grace. 13th verse of that same chapter of Ephesians 6. Wherefore, taking to you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you be able to, shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. How many know we're supposed to pray for one another? Amen. Amen. Yes. A lot of times we read that whole passage and we leave out that last verse, but I'm telling you that's one of the most important verses of that whole deal is that we're praying with all prayer and supplication and praying for all saints. Bear ye one another's burdens and therefore fulfill the law. What law? The law of Christ. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. But we've been made overcomers in this life by the power of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read this because I wrote it down while the Lord was giving it to me. We've been made heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We have these weapons listed here in the book of Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. And we just read those weapons to you. There's an armor listed for all parts of the body. Except your back. And part of it even loops around and covers your back. But, everything we need. This is the part I want you to get at. I want to back up just for a minute. In the battlefield of the mind, there's one very, 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 very important part of this passage that I read you. And it said, taking the helmet of salvation. How many remember that in salvation, it is an all-inclusive term? Amen. Absolutely. Isaiah 53. I can quote you the whole thing and read you the whole thing. But there's one very important part of Isaiah 53. I can't remember the verse exactly. But it said, And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Part of the plan of salvation. People are looking for peace. People are looking for that peace of mind that passes all understanding. And the only way you get it is through the plan of salvation. That's the only way it comes. That helmet of salvation is to protect your mind. So if you'll get into the Word of God, and you begin to study the Word of God, and you begin to find all of these things that, 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 that you have need of, everything you have need of found in these scriptures. Amen. Politician the other day got on national TV and said the answer for the world today can be found in the pages of the Holy Bible. If there's a politician out there smart enough to recognize that, then why don't we as Christians recognize everything we have need of, we can find right here. The Word said He'll supply all of our need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That means if I'm a little bit out of, out, of, out of kelter, if you will, and I ain't got no peace going on in my life today, I can get it real quick. Yes, amen. All I got to do is go to the Heavenly Father and let Him know, Hey, I'm struggling here a little bit today, Lord. Can you show me just a little bit of love? And you'll get that. I'm not one that's... I don't like to preach a lot about emotion, but you'll begin to feel them little doodads run up and down your spine. And then them little doodads get some doodads on top of them. Goosebumps on top of goosebumps. And you feel that love that Jesus Christ is putting down, pouring down into you and pouring into your spirit at that very same time. And you'll have that peace to go through whatever it's going through. But you see, you got to first totally. This is the key. you got to totally, totally, Submit your will to the will of the Father. Totally rely on God. Totally allow Him to be the Lord of your life. Let Him be the Lord of all. All. Those little secret hidden spots that you think you got tucked away in your heart. Let Him take them. Let him, let him, get, get rid of it. Clean house. Get rid of it. Let God take it all. Amen.
man. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen? The sword of the Spirit cuts to sunder, separate the bones and the marrow. That's what the Word said. But you got to give it all to Him. Amen? I'm reminded of that chorus. Give them all. Give them all. Give them all to Jesus. Shattered dreams. Broken hearts. Wounded souls. Give them all. Give them all. I don't know when you get this. Give them all to Jesus. And He will turn your sorrow into joy. Amen? Brother Linda, will you come, please? Hallelujah. Isaiah 53, the chastisement of his peace was upon him. In the book of Psalms 115, 9 and 11. Brother David, you got that? O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. That's where our help comes from tonight, is in the Lord. Deuteronomy 20 and 4, For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight against your enemies to save you. I had overlooked that scripture time and time again in reading the book of Deuteronomy, but this week it just kind of jumped out at me. It just kind of jumped out. For the Lord, your God, is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Thank God. What I got to say tonight is hang on. Hang in. Put it in plain old oaky stage. Never give up. Winston Churchill, the biggest message he ever preached, biggest speech he ever gave was three words, never give up. Never give up. It's time for us to stand our ground and let the old enemy know who we are in Christ. And who are we? We are the redeemed of the Lord, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a child of the Most High God. I want to sing you a song now. And this song, if you want to come to the altar and pray, that's fine. If you want to listen to the song, that's fine. This song came to me years ago. And it's a Kenny Henson song. I love it. It ministers to me in my time of trouble, in my time of need. I can begin to sing this song because it is Bible-based. And it means a lot to me, and I hope I got the air to do it tonight because I want you to hear the words of this song. Amen. Now, it's been a while since I sang it, so I might already get the words. <clears throat> in my darkest hour, when I'm facing battles that even lawyers and judges couldn't figure out, this song sustained me through the power of the Holy Ghost. So listen to the words of the song. Now I know the Bible says you've done all you can to stand, just stand. And I know it's hard sometimes to look through Still clean eyes and still see the scars in those hands. Just you keep this in mind when hope seems so hard to find. And surely you've not reached me. it all, look to Him, look to Him, for He only, when sorrow makes lonely, all the days and the night closes in.
emotions can They can get so hard to understand But then I know one who knows it all His eyes see the little sparrow fall Yet he can hold back the sea with just one hand And in your heart, the only one that knows all the heartache, all the trouble you bring. So when life seems everything but good, remember him, cause he's the only one that could. If you'd only dare look to him. That's who is the author and the finish of our faith. If we'll look to Jesus Christ, whatever situation you're facing tonight, he can meet that need and he can give you that answer. Amen. Well, that's just it, ladies and gentlemen. Just trust in the Lord. Amen. You know, and, and, and just kind of complimenting what Brother Wayne shared with us tonight about the battlefield of the mind. Remember 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then it goes on to say, And casting down every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of the Word of God, and bringing into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ. Child of God, just remember, if that old devil shoots a fiery dart in there and he can just get you to imagine in the worst, the worst, the worst, you got to remember to cast that negative thought down. Don't let the old devil's thoughts mess up the glorious life that Jesus wants you to live. Amen. Amen. You know, Brother Wayne was talking about that Bible. I just appreciate that testimony. That's a good testimony. Don't y'all think? Amen. That, I mean, you may not think it's a miracle, but ladies and gentlemen, that was a miracle. God done something there that, I mean, it was it was more than just a, a natural act took place, I believe. But I'm mindful of, of Brother Philip in the Word of God. You remember Brother Philip? He was a preaching to an Ethiopian eunuch. And then suddenly after he'd done all his business with the Ethiopian, he was found in his ostas. He was the, the Ethiopian didn't see him no more. I mean, there was a translation took place. Well, if God can translate a grown man, why in the world can't we believe that God can translate a Bible from wherever back here to this van? That Brother Wayne said himself, I looked that van over and he couldn't find it. So I'm just telling you, we serve a miracle working God. Please stand with me tonight and let's dismiss in a word of prayer. Father God, we are thankful tonight that we have the mind of Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and that, Lord, that we do not have to allow the enemy to bully us around with torments of fear and, and negativity. Lord, I just thank you tonight for the faith that you put into our heart with this word of God, and that, Lord, that we can serve notice to the powers of darkness, that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Lord, we thank you for Brother Wayne, and we thank you for the anointing of the Lord that was upon him to bring this word tonight. Thank you for that powerful song at the conclusion of this service. 
Lord, I just pray now as we get ready to leave this house, I pray, Lord, for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon every believer tonight. Help us, Lord, to go forth to show the love of Jesus to this lost and dying world. Help us, Lord, to have that Holy Ghost boldness to witness to unsaved family and friends or backslidden family and friends throughout this week. God, I just pray a hedge of protection around each and every one of our, our church family members, that, Lord, that you'd watch over our family and friends. And, Lord, we pray for even those that are unbelievers, Lord, out there, that we're just praying for their salvation, Lord. We just pray that you'd help this old world to have a mighty revival. So, Lord, I ask you to use us as ambassadors of Christ to, to go forth and share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, I thank you now for this time together. Pray your blessings upon one and all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for being here tonight. Y'all have a great week. White as snow are you washed in the blood of the Lamb. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin. And be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be